So those are nice, but my shoes this morning weren't nice. The shoes weren't, they weren't not nice. They were mids though. So you need to have higher lows. There you go. Yeah, I mean, mids are okay. Like if you got calves, you can wear mids. I have beautiful calves. You have terrible calves. Can you see my calves? You got big knees. I have big knees and big calves. Look at my calves. Hey, your calves are not nice. Look, hey, we got people hey, stepping hey, in. Hey, what hey, no. hey. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yo. How are you? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate Welcome it. in. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome, Thank Welcome to the you. pivot. Yo. Hey. Hey. Damn. Great. Thank nice you. Man, Chan. Hey, Chan, ain't that crazy? We got all this chocolate in here in your red tail. Oh, it's okay. Hey, they, that's... I call it the cream. <laughs> it rises to the top. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Man, listen. Uh, welcome to the pivot. It's, um, it's an honor to, to have you both. I think this is, not I think, this is the first time we've done two guests. Um, really? Yeah, this first time. We're honored. Uh, first time ever. Yeah. And you know. Hey. Oh, we're lightning yeah. in the first. You know, we're lightning in the first. <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's very, it's very rare. It's very rare you can have like a two-time Super Bowl champ on your show. It's very rare, right? Or a world champion track athlete or an Olympian, a gold medalist. It's, it's rare you get an opportunity to have those type of people on your show. Even more rare. You have them both at the same time. Hey. Same damn time. Same time. <laughs> and crazier, they actually live in the same house. <laughs> what? It's wild. And that is that is wild, man. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Like that's I feel like that's the house when you go over and to visit your people, you feel like an underachiever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But man, y'all guys. I'm trying to figure out who picked out these nice outfits. <laughs> Her? <laughs> Her? I said, we got to go looking right, baby. We got to go looking right. I was going right. to have on a black tee, my ball, my baseball cap. <laughs> you got to listen to the lady, you know. Um, well, listen, welcome to The Pivot. Um, you know, we just try to give people opportunity to tell stories that we think are fascinating and in ways that athletes don't always get to tell their stories. Yeah. Um, you know, Happy Dad is our sponsor. We appreciate them. For all the people who are watching, please subscribe, like, whether it's Spotify, YouTube, Apple. Um, also, also, the finals have started, right? right? Remember prize picks, mm -hmm. right? If you want to get on prize picks, whether it's Daily Fantasy, you want to get into player props, that's something that you could do. Uh, I am the best of us three. At it, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I know more about sports in general than you. Fred's smarter than both of us. I just know more about sports in general. Uh, Prize Picks is available in almost seventy-five percent of the states. Yeah. It's in all the big ones: uh, Texas, California, Florida. They use the promo code Pivot. They match it up to a hundred dollars. Yeah. And so Prize Picks is dope, and we appreciate them also uh, for being a sponsor. So I read off some of your accolades, and Freddie Flowers does that, right? There's going to be a point in this show. He's going to talk about being drafted in the first round. He's going to talk about all the things we've done in the Olympics and World Championships. And we're going to talk about the fact that you were recruited in high school. You know, all of this. This is not true. Where's my camera? This is not facts. Not true. But the, the, the real question is this. This is what the world wants to know. How you shot your shot? Man, who oh boy? Now nah, I seen a um. I had to sit out for two years. Um, coming out of high school, I wasn't clear with the clearing house. So, uh, my mom loved track, so we would always go to this Texas relays. That's a big track meet in Texas, and um, we sit in first row. I'm like, damn, who was number five at this time? I'm not really understanding track like that. She got a five on her hip. I ain't knowing that's lane five. I just said, I want number five. Ooh, when I get back up here to school, I'm getting, I'm getting number five. So that's how I shot my shot. When I finally seen her, she ain't know I said all of this um, before I met her. And then she actually the one shot the shot. Yeah, I was gonna say that <laughs> I actually shot the shot. Cause I know what I want. <laughs> they say them Jamaican women aggressive. We are aggressive. Yeah. We are, yeah. So I, so how I recall it, cause I didn't know he saw me a year prior, and so it was my sophomore season, and he walks into the cafeteria, and I was like, damn, he fine. <laughs> 
So um, I sat with my sister and I called him over and I was like, hey, you know, what's your name? And he told me his name. He said Aaron. And it was funny because the guy I had dated right before him, his name was Aaron. So I was like, oh, no, I don't No, No, thank you, sir. You fine. But go on about your business. <laughs> and um, yeah. So then I was like, no, sir, not today. And then actually, I think he had a friend in common. He reached out. We went on our first date and we were just inseparable. We went to like Bennigan's for dinner. Got him. And I was like, I was like, I'm gonna marry him. I just know it. And then we went to church. So we went to Bennington's on Saturday, church on Sunday. I said, This is my husband. Yeah. Did you did you ever tell her the, the five story though? Did you tell her that at the first date? No, no not the first long, date. Long, 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 long time after. Yeah. <laughs> I had no I had when he came up to me, he was cool as a cucumber. I had I had no idea he even knew like who I, I was. Saw I thought he did, and I didn't know he I didn't know who he was either. I didn't know he played ball or nothing. But I had no idea for years that he had already kind of scouted me out. Hey, but that's what it's about, man. You know what I mean? Listen, I just want to know, you know, your little Aaron or your son, is it possible to buy some stock? <laughs> <laughs> right now. Hey, right, right now. I think it's an, appro- I think it's an appropriate question. <laughs> we should probably talk about that. He's, he's super competitive, he's bro. He's so competitive I mean, already and so athletic. It's insane. He's crying now when he loses. Yeah. It's... When he ain't even, there's no way for him to win, he's crying when he loses. So I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it, it. it would definitely be a, a disappointment if he was like slew footed and, <laughs> and, 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 and slow. Goofy, stumbling around. <laughs> <laughs> but but are y'all competitive with each other? Like playing at the highest level, doing what y'all did. Like, do y'all go at it? On certain it things, if we that. bowl in a, something outside of even playing video games or card games, whatever, we get competitive at times, but for the most part. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. Yeah, not really. But if we if we're doing something where there's a score, you know, slowly but surely it gets real serious. What about on the track? Nah, we ain't never raced. Track man. Uh, uh, Tripper. Huh? Uh, Tripper. I ain't losing. I mean, but you probably you obviously you'll stand a chance in a sprint. Yeah. Yeah. In a hundred and hundred 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 and under. It's a hundred and under. But under that, I don't know. Nah, I ain't racing. Not even just to see. Like. (laughs) I'm not losing. <laughs> have y'all have y'all ever had those conversations though? Like talk about racing, or is he's always just like, you know, I'm gonna stay in this lane, you know, no pun intended. I I got you in a hundred and down, you can have a two and up. <laughs> yeah, we never really talked about it. I think it's funny because my husband, you know, unlike football, I could never like go out there and play with y'all or train with y'all, but he could actually come out and do my workouts. And so in the summer times, like he would come out and he'd be like, bruh, like this. Cause I trained for the 400, which is Y'all know that's a it's it's hard. It's intense. The hardest race. It's the track. hardest race on the track. And so, you know, all the sprint stuff, obviously, he was always great at. But man, them repeat two hundreds or four hundreds, he'd be like, sis, I'll catch you on the other side. Like So I ran the four. Not not because I was fast, right? Because I was too slow to run the other races. And <laughs> they felt like I had a good gas tank. So, and how did that go? How did so that? So my first my first time, you know how it is. I'm fired up. You know, here I am, a very good football player, high school. So you know what I'm gonna do? I know this dude ain't faster than me. Like he's skinny, man. Like I've been working out a little bit. So the first thing I do, no. fifty three. Hey, no. First yeah. thing I do, Freddie T. Probably jump out the gate. Boom! I'm ahead of everybody. You know, I hadn't really run track. I was like, they've been telling me this was hard. I'm killing these boys, <laughs> and I'm not even registering. Why nobody else is like full Tell speed yet? Know. Man, we get to the end, man. They had a girl that was cheering me on. That's how you know it's bad. They had a girl that was cheering me on. And in my mind, I was still blazing. I didn't realize how slow I was going until I realized she was walking sideways ah! while she was cheering me on. <laughs> Come on, RC! <laughs> <laughs> and I realized, I realized at that point, that the way I decided to run this race was not. probably wasn't the way to do it. But you guys, you guys go to UT. Obviously. Wait, 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 Ryan, wait, wait. What was the time? I ran 57. Oh. First one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I ran 57. <laughs> you gave him a little love with the 53. He got the short lower torso. Like he can't really go nowhere. <laughs> Your blood doesn't hold oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this mother got sickle cell. <laughs> So he be joking, man. But I have the train. But I've had sickle cell crisis. That's not right. I've had sickle That's cell crisis right. before, and I is lost my pro- organs. Uh, is he your friend? Did he he is, is my friend. I wouldn't. I don't know. I wouldn't. So what happened was, Saya, I went to Denver. I had a sickle cell crisis. I lost my spleen, my gallbladder, piece of this my is liver. This not funny stuff. And he thinks it's so funny. 
<laughs> man, it breaks my heart. Yeah, they can't help it though. They're besties. Yeah. Like Chan, Chan is gonna always find an angle. Yeah. And that. RC, RC usually takes the high road because he's such a pro. <laughs> but uh, damn, a fifty-seven. I gave him credit. You did. You yeah. gave I gave him, him credit for four seconds. Yeah. I was running in the high 40s and I came in like second in district. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the first race, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> high 40s though, that we're gonna have to fact check that. We're gonna have to fact check that. You ran a 49, 48 in high school? That I mean, that's solid. You didn't did you go to state? No. See, but that's that's I lost usually regionals. 48 to get you to state. state. I lost at regionals. New Orleans, y'all not fast like that. I mean, I think Louisiana. you were still running 50s, RC. Yeah, I don't so, think, I don't no, think don't you got I ran a ton of 50s too. <laughs> I'm talking about at my best. Like, I'm gonna tell you my best. Yeah, does anybody ever talk about their average? <laughs> I'm telling you the best. But you know, we, back to the show, because this is turned into an RC, an RC roast session. You guys are, are at UT, and obviously, you're an amazing athlete. You're an amazing athlete. What was it like to have an opportunity to support each other? You know, and being young athletes like that. I mean, I think I don't think I could have made it as far as I did without having somebody who really understood the level of commitment that it took to be great in track. Like, I was doing a thousand sit-ups every day. I was like going to bed early. I was, you know, like why, like all the things that I would do off the track to be great. I think it'd be hard for somebody who wasn't as passionate about sports to really get me and understand me and support me. And so. I don't know, I think I, you know, I had the best of both worlds and my husband. And then ironically, we kind of went through our struggles at the same time. So Hods and lows. Yeah, like I my 2008 when I didn't win the goal, it was really hard for me. You know, Ross had just had an injury. And so it was like we always were able to kind of be there for each other and like say the right words. And, you know, and, and I like I always say I don't think I would have been as successful without my husband because it was just like always like the safe space and just somebody who I could rely on, somebody hold me accountable, like all those things, so. So she had like what I called a cheat code early, having a, her, her pops in her life that was a great athlete that um, played soccer, but didn't get a chance to, I would, in my terms, reach his full potential. Yeah. And you know, when that happened, you know the things that you wish you would have done, you're able to pass those things down. So seeing her in college, having her legs um, propped up before a race and, um, juicing, make, she, he's making her juices and not just putting fruits and vegetables in there. He actually has a book mm. that he's breaking down and telling her, okay, this is for this. This is going to pull this out of you. And yeah, replace your just, oxygen. It, it was stuff. crazy for me to, to witness that. And then um, the ice baths and the sleep sit -ups and sit-ups. So just to, to witness that um, as a freshman in college. It, it motivated the hell out of me to, to have somebody like that um, on my side. You mentioned juice, and thank God for clearing that up. Yeah. I got nervous at first. I went, I was like, no, every day that type of show. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, um, I want to I want to stay in 2008, and we can you know move forward as we go. But uh, in 2008 was also challenging times, especially now with what's going on in the world with abortion rights. You know, uh, in your memoir, uh, Chasing Grace, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, you had an abortion two weeks prior to Beijing yeah. Olympics. You still won gold. Yeah. But how, how tough was it, you know, on top of everything else that you had gone through, right? And then you mentioned Ross was supportive. Yeah. So kind of dive in with us about the abortion then. And, you know, and that, making that decision and then, you know, your support system here with Ross. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because um, I get emotional even now and it's been how many years? A long time. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's very hard because, you know, I'm sitting here with all great male athletes, right? You all have accomplished great things. This is an issue you guys would never have to deal with, right? It's something that you never have to consider. And so it was just really hard. I think I was a sophomore in college at the time. And... You know, when we're in college, there's a lot of misinformation. Um, like our peers just always say, oh, when you're at your fittest, you can't get pregnant. Like that was a real thing that I believed. And I'm training for the Olympics. I mean, I got like 3% body fat. You know, I'm at the fittest I've ever been. And so although Ross and I had been very careful up until that point, you know, it, you know, it happened. And, you know, I'll never forget, you know, having to make that choice. I, I said when I was nine that I was going to be an Olympic champion. And here I was, like, on the precipice of achieving this dream. Oh, Ten years later. And, yeah. And I find out I'm pregnant right before I have to get on the plane to go to Beijing. And um, 
it's like no right choice, right? It's like, of course, I love my, we weren't married at the time. We, I think we had about just gotten engaged. I knew he was my forever. I knew we wanted to have a family. But I also had this dream of being an Olympic gold medalist my whole life. And it's like you find yourself between a rock and a hard place. And, um, and so, you know, I go to that clinic um, and I have an abortion two days before I board a flight to Beijing. And it literally feels like you leave a piece of your soul in the clinic, you know? And I feel like, you know, I, I have a hard time talking about this because it is really hard. Um, but I've never met a woman who wanted to be at an abortion clinic. You know, it's not, <laughs> all this conversation about it, it's a very difficult and private situation, you know? And so, um, yeah, so I go to Beijing and not only, um, I, I go there with a very heavy heart because I'm also a Christian woman who never thought I would have an abortion. So it's like emotionally, spiritually, all these things, I'm, I'm weighed down, I'm, I'm different, you know? And so I never like to say that um, the woman who won the Olympic gold medal in the 400 obviously deserved it. But I feel like a part of me felt like I wasn't deserving of gold that night. I had won every single race that year. I was, they said it was the upset of the track and field championships, and it was. I should have won. But it wasn't just the physical part. It was the spiritual and emotional part that I was kind of weighed down with on the track that night. But I share in my book that I also have this incredible experience in Beijing um, where I felt the loving arms of God in Beijing. So I, I, after the Olympics, so most of the times you get on the bus, you go to the village, you go back to the village. And so after I lost, I was like, I'm not going back. I can't like, you know, everybody's gonna be like, what happened? And I didn't want to deal with that. So I was like, I'm gonna go find my family. My family was there, so I'm gonna go to there to find them. And so I get on the bus, but I'm, I'm crying so hard. I can't even barely see out my eyes. And I got on the bus and I realized I'm lost. Like I get off, I, get off, I, don't have, I have no idea where I am. So I'm in a strange country. Nobody speaks my language. I just lost the biggest race of my life. Like all of these things. And I, I no lie, I literally feel like God wrap his arms around me. He's like, you're forgiven. Like, I love you. Like you're whole, you know? And for me, that experience was worth everything I went through because I think that, you know, there's, it's like our relationship with God is different for everybody. But I think when you have those experiences, it's like, wow, like, you know, like God's love is not like our, our love. It's not conditional. He loves us regardless. And he doesn't want to punish us for poor choices that we make. And so I went on the track a couple of days later and I won one of the most memorable gold medals of my career. After I let go of the shame and the disappointment and all the hurt, um, I won gold with my team in the four by four. So, you know, that experience is, is very special to me. Um, but it's also a very, comes off on the heels of a very hard time. And so when you talk about the abortion rights and laws and all those things, my heart breaks for women because it's not like we are, you know, want to be there. You know, it's, it, it's actually, it's, it, we both play a role in it, right? Like even when we were, while I was writing the book, I went through conversations with Ross where I was like, there were times I felt alone. There were times I felt abandoned. Like when I found out I was pregnant, Ross was at camp. He wasn't even physically there. You know what I mean? He's doing what he loves to do without interruption, without a pause, because it's not something he has to deal with. And that, I felt broken by that. And we had to go through that, you know? You know, nowadays you have lawmakers and such that are making these decisions for women. As a man, how do you feel knowing what your wife, gone, what well, your fiance at the time, but now your wife, what she had gone through, you know, what's, what's your thoughts when you hear about the abortion rights these days? Well, at, at that time, I felt like... Especially in Texas. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's um, like she just said, I was at football camp. I ain't had nothing really to worry about that that was going to hinder me from, from my dreams. So, um, like I, I say now, I'm going to support my wife on whatever choice she, she makes. And that's, that's the way I feel today. And I, I don't feel like we have us as men. Um, that's not really something that we should be able to dictate for from a woman. Right. I think we should support whatever decision it, it is and kind of sit down and, and discuss it and come up with the right plan for um, for our family. So many times, like you mentioned it, and it was, it was beautiful to hear you share that. And thank you so much because and like you said, it is a, a personal moment and it is also not something that you ever plan on on, on doing, right? Nobody gets in that situation or has that situation purposely. Um, but you mentioned having that, that moment where you felt God's arms around you. Um, but you also said you had to go through some of those things yourself. What, what's the dynamic of, okay, 
I have, I'm married to a world-class athlete or I'm dating a world-class athlete, but we truly live in two different worlds. Women athletes are treated much differently yeah. than men. Like you said, he's in camp and yeah. as, as, as difficult as it can be for him, like he's not having to do or deal with some of the things that, that you were dealing with. Did that, how did that impact the way you guys moved forward in your relationship? What type of understanding did that give y'all? That was definitely a defining moment for me as a female athlete um, and my husband being a male athlete. I realized, damn, like it feels like we're doing the same thing, but this is not the same. Um, but I think what has been um, allowed us to be successful in our marriage, we've been together for 19 years now, is communicating. And so I think after I was able to kind of square how I was feeling and how it made me feel, I was able to share that with my husband. And as you can see, like he, my husband is just, he's a great listener. He um, always wanted to be there for me. You know, so there was never any feeling of like, oh, those feelings don't matter or whatever. He was always like, yo, like whatever I can do to make you feel loved and supported and I hear you, babe. You know, like we just were able to communicate through it. And for me, it, it drew us closer together, you know, because having somebody who just loves you like that and who will be there for you and understands the journeys, I think, I really think that that made us even closer. Ross, like watching, watching your wife grind, like she, like, I, you know what I'm saying, my, you know, my, I, I wasn't married to an Olympian, you know what I'm saying, so watching her grind, but I don't even know if I'm saying it right, like knowing that this is not a lucrative mm -hmm. thing, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like we we can go out there ball out and get bread, right, right, like watching it through college and come up, like had it, like. Is the motivation just to be great? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the girl's like, making some money now, though. <laughs> Do not sleep on me, okay? But the NFL, like, listen, let me correct me. NFL type money? I mean, some years I was making, you know, I would make reach a million dollars in earnings on, you know, but it was, it was basically because it wasn't necessarily on the track, it was like the off the track yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? Like being able to get those endorsements for the Olympics here. But what, that wasn't every season, right? And then we had something called the Golden League where if you won six races, you could win a million dollar jackpot. And I did it three times. But I, I shared the jackpot three times. The most I made was half of it. So I was, you know, your girl was doing all right. My sugar mama, sugar mama in college, man. <laughs> oh, but, but that's the And I bought him his first car because I was pro first, okay? Ross, Don't you know? get it twisted. <laughs> Ross, you was a kept man in college, bro. Hey, hey, hey you out there rolling around. They <laughs> Don't you had NIL? Hey, you had NIL money before NIL. <laughs> they had to call me to the office one time. Hold on, you got too many shoes. Yeah, the shoes. All of, what is this? Yeah, like, yeah. My wife's what, what kind of car are we talking about? He wanted, uh, it was an old school, it was a blue old school with rims on it. So he was in class one day and I was like, babe, meet me out back of Moncrief. And he was like, okay. Pulled up. And my, I pulled my, up. At that time, a 20, was it 20 or 22? 20 22 something. Yeah. It was she the had, car he wanted. Me right. She had hey, me what, right. Hey, what's going on in Texas? Yeah, I can't get no players drafted, bro. What, what's going on? Man? Oh, man. That took a turn. That was a pivot. That was. We was in like a happy place. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, go back to Channing's question. Come on back over here, Ross. <laughs> we gonna get out. We need to buy more cars. What's going on? Need more sugar mamas down there? What? But honestly, though, like, what is that like? I mean, we all we were talking about Pell Grants Bro, early on today. To be honest, you're the most achieved athlete in this room right 100%. now. 100%. And it's not close. To be honest, like, you have ran away from us. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Like, that's the craziest thing. That's what I was trying to get out there. I said, I don't know if I'm asking it right. Like, you are better at what you did than all of us in here. But. She a beast. A monster. But. You talking about a half a million a year? My sorry ass, my best. Year, I made six million. Like I'm like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but but to, to be there and to yeah. see, yeah. it's really get it's it's a marginalized. Yeah, absolutely. There's you know, no doubt gender. about it. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And to be on one side saying, yeah, I get drafted the first round, I'm gonna get twenty million, right. but knowing your wife is the best in the world, a beast, and. Trying to make a million a year, like, like, did y'all, do y'all have, did y'all talk about that? Do y'all have to come? How, how did that go? We, we never talked about the, um, the financial part of it. We always just talked about the grind and the journey. That was, our, that's how we supported each other the whole yeah. way. Like, um, like I said, seeing her, like, bust people ass for like ten years straight for a whole decade was that was the joy that I saw. And then to see her. 
her process. That that helped me along my way to um, while I was in college, seeing her be, be, become a pro before I became a pro. Um, it was just more for for me on the outside looking in. It was more inspirational than anything. Um, the money part. I mean, like she said, she was she was. This is my sugar mama. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the money part, she, we, we were good. Um, and then once I got drafted to the first round, then we were money, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> like you had watched your wife grind, and she showed the ultimate loyalty. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't about gender and who's who's doing what. It was like we rocking together, and right now I have, and so you're going to have. The, the moment, though, like you said, we, we got right. Like, we, we got to a point where we were set. What was that moment like for you? It's like, nah, babe, like, now nah, we got it. What they call now chasing the bag, I came from humble, humble beginnings. So um, just being able to make it to the NFL, that was a dream come true. The money was some, I, I, my scholarship was checked with $864.32 a month. So to no, to the penny, <laughs> to the penny. So to to be able to get millions in your bank overnight, and then have to trust financial advisors that you just met that same night, and putting money in the bank and all of that. It, it I didn't have time to even, I guess, put it all in in context what the money actually meant, and um, yeah, I used to check my account every single day, like dang. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this is gone high. Woo. So um, the money part, it, it, we never really sat down and had that conversation as far as um, we're good. But I think I think for me, when I think about what you asked that question, I remember um, Ross and I had been dating for, so we got together in 03, he got dressed in like 07. So it was like four or five years we were dating. So I'm putting the pressure like, bruh, I need a ring. Like this ain't no like, you know? And I think for me, when you talk about like us being good and, and him feeling like, you know, we had gotten to that next level, he kept saying to me, I don't want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, like okay, he was like, ahead. yeah, he was like, um, I don't want, I want to buy a ring better than you can buy for yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It was always like, he was like, if I buy you a ring right now, you could have you bought that for yourself, you know? And so he made sh- and, and he made sure he bought me a ring. Yeah, I've been looking oh, at I, it. I, I done seen he it. Made, he made sure. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like that was the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at it. Every time she hits you with a one of these, yeah, 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 check it out. <laughs> Do y'all feel as if because every time you talk to somebody that y'all were together since freshman year of college, I love, I love love. I say it all the time. I love love. Like I love, I love to see strong black couples. I love to see that. But do y'all feel as if y'all missed out on anything? Getting together that young, you being as a dog, you being a dog, first round pick. Like I was in Miami as a third round pick, and, and this Ross, is tricky. Ross, this is tricky. Man, I, Watch I, the winding no, road, y'all. Bro, I hit them streets heavy, 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 heavy. <laughs> third round, no. Like, do y'all do y'all ever think or talk about y'all missed out on like y'all's young life? To be honest. <laughs> Where's the suspense music? <laughs> I, I do. Yeah. Cue the suspense. Run it. Hey, look, Fred T. I set up. Hold on. This is the first time we'd had a couple on. I'm, oh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I guess like I, I've, I've broken it down to, um, I guess, plenty of times. When you first get into a relationship, I'm going to speak for myself as an athlete. You have a few women. Yeah. So when she first come on board, you're just not getting rid of all your women. So just it's a process, and then how long was your process exactly? I just oh there we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, you gotta get it chronologically. <laughs> you like shit? Hold up, <laughs> shit moment. <laughs> oh shit. How, how long? How long was your process again? Uh, we've been together for nineteen years. Yeah, how long was the process? We um, CTE, 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 CTE. 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 Eighteen and a half CTE. years. We've been good. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, your brain, your brain is not working. Yeah, but nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I enjoyed my time while I was free. So, yeah. yeah no. And when did you categorize <laughs> as free? I'm damn near 40. And looking back, like, I know guys that have been together with their, you know, women since high school. Yeah. And I just look at them as if, like, 
did you really experience life? Did you yeah. really experience life being together that young, like before you really got to see the world? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, for me personally, I felt like, and it's funny because I never ever thought about that before or like, you know, until recently, I think somebody like Brent mentioned it, like, dang, you've been with your husband for 19 years, girl, and telling me what they were doing in their 20s. <laughs> um, but I think, I think as a woman, it's like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm like, I found, I'm lucky. Like I found my partner early. Like a lot of my, all my girlfriends who didn't find their man in college have no man still. You know what I mean? So I think, I think obviously like, and, and for me personally as a woman, like, you know, to me, there's no, like, I mean, if I had connected with you and we didn't make it, like, you know what I mean? So to, to, for me personally, I don't, I don't stress about that. I don't struggle with that. Cause I feel like I found my forever early and I feel very blessed about that. And you know, he still puts it down like it was in college. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm like, I'm missing you, still, you still young college, Ross? Yeah, he he's still yeah, he young. You, Chad? College, still bro. showing out. <laughs> well, you got to show out, bro. He's still showing out. So but you got that drawer. Hey, you got that drawer next to your bed with that stuff in it. Yeah, he has the drawer. He got there. you got a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many goddamn battery powered <laughs> things in that drawer. It's stupid. <laughs> no, it's crazy, We've taken man. another pivot. We've taken another. <laughs> it always goes here at some point. Uh, uh, Bro, who done kept Duracell in business? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, how long you been married? Uh, 11. We just did 11. And on our 11th anniversary, we went to a nude a uh, resort in Mexico. What? Yes. And y'all are both cool. nude? Yeah, and walking around, everything hanging. Really? <laughs> yep. Only problem is when we when when you go at meals. Yes. Like, I don't want your balls over my <laughs> eggs. Yeah, that's like you gotta get dressed when we yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. We but we keep it fresh. Like, yeah, man, I can man, I can text y'all some stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I need some new tricks. It's been 19 years. I'm getting, uh, I got to need some new tricks, man. man. Jump off the, <laughs> jump off the nightstand. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> He'll turn this into the rated R fest. So I'm usually, he's a curator, moderator, and I sometimes have to bring it back. Bring it back. But we can have, but we can always have fun. <laughs> but uh, you guys, man, just amazing couple. Yeah. Five Olympic goals. Four yeah. goals. Four goals. Four goals, one okay. round. Four gold. You you worked your ass off. <laughs> Two Super Bowl rings in the Jim Thorpe Trophy. Yes, sir. I'm sure a lot of other um, precious medals around the house. Did y'all know? Did you know that the gold medals weren't gold? I did. So they were. We gold. just learned that we had yeah. Caitlyn on. Yeah, Caitlyn Jenner. They used to be gold, and then they're now gold plated. And then what they did was they make them bigger. So like ours, like it's funny. My first one in 04 is significantly smaller than my 2008 2012 ones. I just kind of threw that out there a little bit. But anyway, yeah, we heard it. Um, yeah, okay. You said um, a decade. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're gold plated, so they're not gold all the way through, which I think is not right after all this work that we done did right. to get these. But y'all ain't paying. We don't get you, we don't get paid at all to compete in the Olympics, yeah. which I think is insanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the money that's being made around the Olympics, even the freaking starter is making money. It's like, how do the people who are bringing in, I mean, that's a, I could talk about that forever. Right. But I'm like, at least we get some gold, when man. You say, when you say the starter, that's the dude shooting the gun yeah. you talking about? Yeah, you gotta make more than him. Yeah, we should make more than him. You make money off your contract. So Nike, whoever your sponsor is, they'll pay you for your bonuses. But to actually show up to the event, you don't make any money, which I think is bizarre. I mean, the, the NBC contract, billions of dollars, the Nike contract, billions of dollars. It's being, you know. Is there anyone in the sport though that's an advocate for wage increase? Yeah. Oh my God. Like I'm in twenty in, in two thousand and twelve, I'll never forget. I spoke out about this. I was like, this needs to change. The Olympics no longer features amateur athletes. These are professional. This is what we do full time. Before the Olympics, they were amateur. They were young people. You know what I mean? But that has been years ago. So I spoke out. I said, listen, athletes need to be getting paid. We had this campaign that I initiated with track and field. We demand change. You would not believe the response from especially Americans when I did that. They were, I mean, they were like, if you don't want to run for our country, go do something. Like, they killed us. And I'm just like, you don't work for free, sir. You're not going up there to Dale and saying, you know what, I just love this country. Dale, you can have my time. Nobody's doing that. So why is it that you think that I somehow don't love the country or I'm not a good citizen if I want to get paid for the hours and hours of work that I'm putting into my sport. Right. So what I think is that people have been thinking like that for so long, they're not taking the time to say, okay, hold up, wait a minute. What are they really doing? How are they living? 
Like, you wouldn't want your heroes that you're watching. You got the flag at home. You're celebrating. These people are working at McDonald's. They're working at Home Depot. They can't pay their bills. It's like... So yeah, you know, you advocate for it, but the pushback is so severe. It's Nobody wants to, to speak shut up. Shut up and dribble or shut yes, up and play. Yes, yes, exactly. It's the exact same exactly. thing. But you you put in the work, you're well deserving of it. Yeah. Back to the trophies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Back to the trophies real quick. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. You, guys. you guys got a lot of, like, that's amazing what you guys were able to accomplish. How do you store that, like, in the house? Safe deposit? Safe? I mean, I don't want, I hope we ain't got no robbers and nobody crazy. <laughs> watching the show, but that's a lot of precious yeah. metal. And at home, before we got here, we we had a, a trophy case where we would keep them. But um, since we moved here, we keep them in a drawer. Um, <laughs> Unceremoniously in a drawer. It's, it's a disgrace. Closet, wherever. Yeah. And my mom actually keep my, my Thorpe Award. Um, when I won the Thorpe Award, I actually, when they presented it to me, I presented it to her. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I would like to. It's, it's funny because I feel like when you get to certain place in your life is like the trophies were cool, but it's like the journey, the experience is the memories, you know? So it's like at first you want them all there and now it's like, you know, it's just like they were cool to have, but it's like, man, what we did to get there I think means more to us. So I keep telling Ross I'm gonna do something with the office and put them up, but it just hasn't really been a priority for us. Yeah, you can, you know, it's crazy. It's like, they don't really understand what we do with what with our Super Bowl rings or our gold medals and stuff like that. Like they don't <laughs> like, like whether we like whether we store them or if we ever look at them. But you know, when when you put in the work to get those things, exactly. uh, you just but put, this, put it to the side. This is the thing. I, I did fall short of a Super Bowl ring. Yeah. But but I have some precious stuff that, you know, through my hard work. Yeah. Three SEC championships, a national. You love your national championship ring, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. I work my ass off for it. So I appreciate it. Where are they now? I got to ask my mom. Right. She controls everything. <laughs> you know, I got a Hall of Fame ring from Florida. Yeah. A few other things. I mean, I got stuff, bro. I got stuff. My bad, man. I ain't got shit. Yeah, you terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Ross, so when I, I slid in Ross DMs, by the way. Like, this is how all this happened. I slid in your man DMs. Right? I'll, I'll allow it. I'll yeah, allow yeah. It. I'll and allow at the time, at the time, I didn't know you were going to be on Real Housewives. Oh, that's right. That's like, right. I didn't know at all. Like, it was, I, it was literally like we were having discussions about how to move the show forward. And I was like, man. And you know what, real quick, I got to say this, because you guys have given us so much credit. This show is amazing. Thank you. What y'all are doing is incredible. Super Creating dope. this platform and traveling, like, it's, y'all deserve a moment of. Oh, thank you so much. That means, that means a lot, especially coming yes. from, from, yeah. from both of you yeah. guys. You guys are dope. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. And so, you know, you're on Real Housewives of Atlanta now. What kind of, like, housewife are you? What kind of housewife? You know what I mean? Like, are we, are we right? Because every time I see you, you're laid, you're, you're dressed. Oh, thank right? you. Right? Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't walk around the house in them heels. And... <laughs> so wait, you mean what kind of real housewife am I? Not like on the show, yeah, but not, like, not, I'm, yeah, right. What kind I mean, because I, I mean, I'm the same on both. But uh, I, you should probably ask my husband. Babe, what kind of housewife am I? You better I? answer that question. <laughs> Listen, we want y'all to be happy tonight. We don't, we don't want y'all to leave the pivot and be arguing at each other. Like, we don't want you to wear that shit. <laughs> um, Got the damn bonnet on. <laughs> <laughs> bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> when, you ah. wake, when you wake up and they got that little silk shit on their head, that ain't sexy. <laughs> Take that shit off your head. I'm out. But you want me to look morning. like this right now, oh, right? So I gotta yes. rock my bonnet. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is funny. Hey, because y'all had y'all y'all had your own show at one point, and then and now you're on uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. What are the like dynamics and relationships like on a show like that? On the show, um, so first of all, I never thought I'd be on Housewives of Atlanta. Like I, after I did my own show, I kind of always left the door open to the reality TV. I actually really liked the experience, but never thought I'd be on Housewives of Atlanta. I mean, one because I didn't live in Atlanta, <laughs> so it's like such a big stretch. But um, I, so what I love about this season of the show, and like I told my husband, because obviously he had some reservations when we first started this conversation. That was coming. Kind of I was going to ask that yes, question about joining the show. Um, obviously, they say there's like a relationship curse, and I was like, we saw. We got, a, we got a foundation most people don't have. Um, but, you know, but so I had only met one of the ladies prior to starting the film, Drew Sedora, and then everybody else I was meeting on the show. And so 
it's crazy because you're going into this situation that, you know, like it's an iconic show. A lot of them already have existing relationships. So you're trying to build real meaningful relationships while also being authentic, being, you know, and you meet people for the first time and just, ah, it's like, you know, you got to kind of ease in, but I'm on a show, so I need to be, ah, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's a lot. So, um, but I loved it. I loved the experience. I loved getting to know the ladies. We obviously, like, our relationships kind of ebb and flow. And I know, I hope people will watch it um, that, like, you know, that watch reality TV. But the dynamics, I felt, were very real this season. And I felt like we really were trying to build meaningful relationships while also, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so if somebody says something, you got to respond. You got to, you know, bring that part of it. But, um, yeah, I'm in a good spot with most of the ladies right now. And I really enjoyed the experience. Ross, you guys you know, with what you've done for, for a living, it's not like you're new to the spotlight, but this is definitely like a different level different. Of, yeah. of spotlight. You know, you, you we've seen so many times, not even necessarily the relationship curse, but the fact that people start digging into your life yeah, yeah, yeah. when they see you on TV. They want to see, oh, is this is this really how she is? Is, right. is Aaron really as solid right. as, you know, as, as Sonya is making him right. every time he's on the show? Cause like that, that's real life. What what were some of your reservations of her going into the show? I think the main thing was was the the whole curse and um, just me, us having the experience before to do the reality show. I would bump heads with the producers all the time because they would try to get us to do things that wasn't us and causing conflict that wasn't true, um, and I wasn't with it. So. I felt like that was gonna be the same thing once we entered that world. So um, that was my biggest reservation. Then I, I asked to talk to the producers and kind of got to understand it with them. And um, I guess they told me what I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And then um, that's when we decided to do it. But for the most part, it was it was good. I think my biggest, um, I guess, obstacle to get get past was I like to know people's story. And um, we're not having a chance to meet the fellas, the husbands before uh, filming. It's hard to just go in and just talk to, for me, to go in and just talk to somebody and not really know right. their story. So I, I found myself always kind of, hey, they're talking right. about this and they trying to move the, the, the script along. <laughs> right. It's not a script. Move the conversation. <laughs> move the conversation <laughs> along. There's no script. He about, to get us, he about to get the whole show yeah, in trouble. Yeah, there's hey, no script. I, I'm listening to her. She was like, I'm good with most of the women. And I was like, shoot, you good with Candy? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like, you cool with, you cool with, like, you cool with Candy? Like, like, who, who you, like, honestly, though, but, what, yeah. what, what the, you But the drama. No, I, I say you get into the drama of it. Like, yeah. do, do y'all let that affect y'all's relationship? Because we, we, me and my wife, we had some some um, reality TV type stuff too, and I will cuss somebody the fuck out, and that's what you were kind of saying, like you know you had you bumped heads, bro, Ross, you you could you bumped heads, like that's called yeah. cussing somebody out yeah. with that experience. But 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 do do those reality shows put pressure on y'all's relationship? Unneeded pressure, to be honest, in my opinion. I mean, For I me, felt like this, this season, no, because no. the thing about the show that I really liked was they really want you to be yourself. Like, they're not, like, they're like, what's going on with you guys? And they really want to dig into, like, what's really happening. And so I felt like we shared our reality. Like, the issues on the show was like were, like, our real issues. And, you know, my prayer the whole time, I said, Lord, like, I was excited about this opportunity, but I said, protect my family. Like, I'll deal with the relationship with the girls afterwards, but protect my husband, protect my kids. And we, I felt like we got closer throughout the process of this show. So I was shocked. Yeah, it really was. was it was shocked. a good experience for us. You know, you look at, like you said, the, the, the relationships of it all. And all we see is, like, the finished product. You know, we don't we don't know what the true relationships are, but you know, we've seen people get tried on these shows, oh, yeah. right? And and no, nah, I'm just I'm going some I'm leading up to somewhere, right? I'm leading up to somewhere, right? It's a different thing to like try a lady who was in beauty pageants her whole life, uh, try a lady who was just kicking it <laughs> with Jermaine Dupri back in the day, and to try an Olympic gold medalist with very long limbs, so she got reach. <laughs> from from Broward County. Right. You want yeah. this? Did you, <laughs> did, you, did you ever have some of those moments where you felt like, hold on, let me stand up and let y'all know, like, this ain't no game? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There were two times during the show where I felt like I just had to let them know. Like, and it's funny, because y'all, I've been here for, what, 20, 30 minutes? I don't lead with my four Olympic gold medals or none of that stuff. Like, I, I, lo I love meeting people. I love being around people. 
Um, but, you know, somebody was acting, you know, said, I don't want to give it away because the episode hasn't aired yet. But, you know, she was acting like I wasn't supposed to be at the table. I said, last I checked, I'm the only one that's probably be at this table. <laughs> what, are what, are we, what are we talking about? And like I said, it's not really in my nature to have to tell nobody, like, hold on, sis. So, yes, I do feel like there were moments on the show where I had to let them know because some of them maybe didn't know. You know, maybe they weren't sports fans. Maybe they're not tuned in. So put some respect on my name. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but there were those, those moments. And then the thing about the show that's also tricky, too, is sometimes you leave a situation, you're like, damn, I wish I'd have said this. Or I wish I'd have done that. But I think that's real life, too, right? Like, I'm going to leave this interview and be like, damn, I should have told him this. I should have said that, you know? So there were those moments for sure. But... Um, but yeah, you know, the, and then of course every now and then in Jamaica and Patua came out to have a Ooh. call somebody else and tell them about themselves. And I did that too. So, you know, a, you get a lot, you get a lot. <laughs> you know, I go to Jamaica once a year. I love my Jamaica. That Patois, you get a lot of that? When yeah. y'all fuss and all of that, she come at you like that? Yeah, that's, that's normally how she talks. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because he's half Jamaican. Like sometimes I'll talk to him and I'll be like, how did he understand all of what we just said? And he just right with it. He's a Jamaican. 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. You know, Ross, man, like, you know, we, we, are, we are sitting in this spot and we brought you guys on as a couple, right? Uh, obviously because of Real Housewives and, and different things. And, you know, we've been talking about some of her accomplishment and, accomplishments and where she is. Like you're accomplished in yourself. And so now that you've moved, you know, to Freddie calls it your second career. Freddie doesn't call it retirement. Yeah. No where, such thing. Yeah, like what what are your what are your passions? Obviously you've been a great husband, you're a great man, great father, you you were a great athlete. You beat the GOAT twice yeah. in the yeah. Super Bowl. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like like now where do you where do you find that 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 drive or that thing that that makes Aaron go? Um, first of all, first off is, it's my son. Um, it starts, it starts with, of course, my family, but it's my son, I'm raising him to be a better me. So every single day I try to work on me becoming a better me. So that's my drive from the beginning. But right now, um, being, becoming an entrepreneur that kind of helped me get out of that, that depression phase that I, that I went through, um, at, going into my second second career. <laughs> right. So um having a being able to build something, build a team, um, get all of the stuff that I learned from sports and kind of build a team and, and see it set a goal and see see yourself accomplish it each year. And and that that became my passion. And then um now it's just mentoring kids. Um we me and my, my homeboy we that I've been knowing since high school, we have a foundation um, brand of a champion and it's kind of geared towards like helping kids succeed outside of football. We, we, we go with the football angle, but we try to, we don't, we know there's only less than 1% of us that's going to make it to the NFL. Right. So we try to prepare them for life without football. And, and right now, um, we, we're actually taking them on a tour. I, I missed today. They're in Alabama right now. But um, I'm a fly. We go to Jackson State, um, North Carolina, taking them to Texas, doing little college tours. And now we got a, a team of financial advisors to where once they reach reach a place of getting some money, they won't feel like I felt. Handing your money over to um, a financial advisor that you have no idea about and you just got to trust his words. So all the things that I've experienced along my journey, We've kind of put that in the foundation and building what we call a brand of a champion. So, from a wife's perspective, did you did you see that? You said depression. I'm gonna use your words, bro. Yeah. You said depression. Yeah. Did you see that, and how did you help him through that? A hundred percent. It was tough. It was really tough um, because my husband is. If I say the one thing that when people say like, how would I describe him? It's like he has this joy. You know, like my husband will laugh about anything. <laughs> like I'll come home with the worst news and he'll just laugh. And I'm like, shit, it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> like, but it just always, for me, it was always like, cause for me, everything is a 10. It's like the world is ending. This is it. We're gonna go see Jesus. And he's like, no, babe, like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just you, yeah, you just, the, the car will start again. Don't worry. Like, it's just, it's just probably just the battery, you know? Right. And, um, 
And so he had lost that. He had lost that joy that, um, and it was probably about two or three years, he wouldn't even watch football, wouldn't watch sports. Um, two or three years. Yes. yes. I didn't even know it. He didn't even know I it. I didn't even know it. Yeah. And um, and he, so he started the, he was talking about entrepreneurship. He started the chauffeur company, a chauffeur service in Austin. And I think it just kept him moving, right? Like he's doing something, but he was just kind of going through the motions. And, um, you know, shortly after Ross retired, I retired. And um, and so, uh, but the thing, so the difference with football, which is tough, like there's a lot of advantages that you guys have playing in, you know, that kind of situation, but it's also tough because you don't get to choose when you retire, right? It's subjective. Somebody else got to want you. In track and field, I chose when I retired, you know? Like I was able to say, okay, this is going to be my last year. So I think it, it, it's different with how the mind can accept something like that. And so... I just, you know, I just tried to show up for him as much as I could. And I just kept trying to drill into him that he was just so much more than a football player. And all that he brought to the world in sports, he could bring it to the world in something else. I always say greatness is not fleeting. It lives in us. So if you are great in one thing, you could be great in something else. It's just how you choose to apply yourself. And so, you know, I think for me, I just never wanted to point out that he was like, you know, sad. I just like kind of maneuvered around it and just tried to point out the things that he should be grateful for and that we are so blessed about. And then it wasn't until he kind of came out of his depression, he was looking back like, damn, I must not have been no fun to be around. I was like, bro, for two years, bro. <laughs> I was, it, how we were this, it was this close. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 600 days. I was like, yeah. How, how much of that was uh, being that both of you guys were away from your professional careers, and now you're spending more time together and really working yes. on family. Yes. Yeah, a lot of that yes, has, a has lot. to do with it. Yes, like one of the things that what we, our big, one of our big issues in our marriage, which you'll see play out in the show if you watch the show, is baby number two. So Ross and I haven't had a second child on purpose <laughs> because, so Ross and I both retired, which we already talked about, that's devastating in itself. We're in the house together every day, which. <laughs> that's different. That's different. And you see, the thing is, not only like with y'all, with y'all wise, like we were both gone. Like I'm in Europe for months, so it's like when we were together, and I think that was a part of the spice of our marriage was like we were gone from each other for months. So when we were together, see you. yeah, we, we didn't argue. We you just like, got flewed out. Yeah, <laughs> I was yes, I was being flewed out constantly. So, so you know, so so we're doing there was so many changes, and then we had our son, and I mean that was like a tornado hit the relationship because like 14 years of just us two, we know how we move, we know how we like it, and then it's like, oh, hold up, hold up, this is how I need you to support me now. So we haven't had a second son or a second child because it was so tough on our relationship during that time, and I don't think either one of us took into account all of the things that happened at one time to make it so hard on our marriage, and so, you know, I told my husband, I'm like, I don't know, like, we finally got back to a good place probably a year or two ago, communicating well, you know, finding our groove. He want to have another baby. I'm like, are you sure? Do you remember what last time was like when? <laughs> I tell all the time is, it, it, yes, those things were on the table. But I think our biggest challenge was um, we didn't know, we didn't agree with how each other wanted to parent. I think that was our biggest um, issue. That that. In what of, ways you think you didn't agree? Just, just, um, I guess, man, are from me, um, Mars and women are from Venus, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, she she thought she was gonna be a certain type of parent, a strict parent, and, and I'm I'm more of a disciplinary. Um, I feel like I'm with having a boy. I'm teaching constantly. I'm teaching and, and raising a man. I feel like she's raising. It's like my mom. She's raising a, her baby, and I know if the tables turn, if I had a girl, I'll be the same way. The girl fall ten times, I'm gonna pick up all ten. Deuce, my son fall ten times, I might pick him up. Once, maybe twice, <laughs> depending on how he cry. <laughs> so we didn't really um, connect on a lot of the things to where it can get as small as how to change his diaper. And um, things where she wanted support, in, support on, I wanted to do it my way. She wanted me to do it another way. And I think without lack of communication, we just kind of, all right, when I got deuce, I'm going to raise him how I raise him. She have deuce, she raised them how she raised them, instead of us figuring it out, getting in the, being in the trenches together and really okay. figuring it out how, to, how we're gonna maneuver. And we, I think that was our biggest, biggest comment. That's a big part of a relationship though. Cause that adds something too. Y'all figured it out now though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. But he, see, he's, it's so funny perspective because 
Like when we talk about the issues that I that I felt were in the early phase of of us having a son. As a Jamaican, we used to have uh, someone we would call them a helper. Americans, you guys kind of call them nannies. But the reason Jamaica called them helpers is because the baby's not their primary role. Right, they really are helping the mom. So they come, they do laundry, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, when we have a baby, we're getting a helper. Like, this is what happens in Jamaica. He's like, I don't want nobody living in the house with us. I was like, it gets normal after a while. Like, and he's like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm, I'm actually- Get somebody. Uh, that- that, hold on, hold on, thank you. <laughs> Camera, babe, babe. <laughs> so he says to me, like, Channing, listen. To help. Well, well, stay here with me, Channing. Stay here with me. Stay here with me. We right here. So listen, he said, let me turn my back yes, please. Yeah, I feel, I feel bad that you said it. Now I feel like, man, I was out here well, slave we driving. House, we, yes. real house, we, we real housewives <laughs> of the pivot right now. Yes. <laughs> what we gonna do? So listen, so he tell, Channing, he tells me he going to be in the trenches with me. He's like, oh, we'll do it. I'll be in the trenches with you for the first six months. Then we can get somebody. And I'm in the trench, and I'm like... <laughs> Look at me. Where is my husband in the trench? He ain't got no titties. He ain't got no titties. <laughs> I can't help you. In, in well, then you should have got somebody that could. <laughs> Facts. He, yeah, yeah. He, Fred yeah, Facts. He can't do that. But yeah, two, every, every two hours waking up, like it's a lot. I got three. We got three kids. But yeah. it was tough. And so I think that that ca- that caused the issues because it was like I was like, man, like if I. I didn't feel like he was doing what he said he was going to do. And then I feel like sometimes men, I don't want to hate overgeneralizing, but it's like the, even the small things I'm telling you, I'm like, this is important to me. He's like, yeah, he, I, stay up with me for an hour when I'm breastfeeding this time. And he's like, what's the point of me staying up? We're going to both be tired. Yes. Yeah. That's, what I want. that's the trench. I want both of us to be I tired. Want us, I, I want us both to be tired. That's, that's the trenches, sir. I'm in the thick of it. I'm in the thick of it. You know what? Hey, what's so, what's so crazy, though, is because it's a different dynamic, though. Yeah. Right? Like you, you, you guys' life, lives changed dramatically very fast. Like you said, you were used to being in Europe or, you know, competing for this amount of time. You've always trained and worked and played. And so not only were those things over, but it was like, we got this little human. Yes. You know, and and, it, and it's so crazy, you know, what you said about if you had a girl, because I have two girls and I have a son. And like, I was really hard on my son, you know, and I would always get it. Like, why you act like that with him? Like, you're not like that with the girls. I said, well, they don't ever have to run a household right? They don't ever have to be able to lead a household in that manner, right? And I was like, and they don't have to take care of people. You know, I was like, I used to make him do certain things. Like, he would have to get up every, my son plays for Arizona State now, but he would have to get up. Wait, 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 you have a son that's how old? I have a daughter that's graduated from college. What? Yeah, she graduated from LSU. I thought you were talking about four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds. No, nah, yeah, I was, I was getting busy early. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was getting busy. He, he didn't know what a condom was when he was in high school. <laughs> Actually, not true. Why do you treat me you this were way? Wait, you, you had a, your you first were, kid in high school? No, he's. I was 19. I was in college. But you were skating. Oh, but that's close to high school, though. It's, I was a sophomore by that point. You know what I mean? And, I didn't have. I didn't have unprotected sex till I was 24, 25. Okay. That's a lie. <laughs> that's why I said okay. I didn't know if you wanted that to be on the record or the pivot. Oh, my, my hips are quick though. <laughs> <laughs> and that boy glues get tight. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh. That tingle, that tingle now. You gotta get up out of there. <laughs> hey man, I was trying to make a good point, man. My bad, my bad. I'm I was sorry. trying to no, I was trying to make a good point about raising kids. Cause, cause what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'll let RZ go. Yeah, I'll let uh, go ahead and no, I was just but I was just basically, I was basically saying though like I had that same issue in raising my son yeah. and it was different in my household because it got to be compared to how I treated my girls right. and I was like you know I'm gonna be the first I'm gonna be the first man that loves them I'm gonna be the first man mm-hmm. that hugs on them. I'm gonna be the first man they ever see get angry about something I said I need them to know what that's supposed to look, look like, like from someone who would give their life for you exactly yeah. right and I said but my son like it's it's a totally different thing I was like you know there are gonna be some times he wants something or his family wants something or needs something where he gonna have to do things he doesn't want to do. And I was like, I want him to be used to that. I don't want him to feel like I have to stretch and do this to provide for my loved ones. I want him to know that that's part of it. Mm. And so and so I get that. How how did you guys finally come to a resolution though? Yeah, I think it just, it, it kind of happened. I think um, we got tired of fighting with each other. And um, I think it just, she kind of let go and let me yeah. be a father. And I just let her be be the mom, and then we started. What what our foundation is is based on is support. 
and we saw that we we were lacking that. And I think that's when we kind of came together and was like, all right, baby, I'm ready to listen now. Yeah. What you need? Right. And then um, we had an open line of communication. And um, and I think what really opened it up, we were able to able to be raw. Because all I would hear is, you being a bad father. And that wasn't what she was telling me. She was saying, you're not being a supportive husband. And um, I think vice versa. She, yeah. she thought I was saying she was being a bad mom, and that's not what I was saying. So I think that's, that was the, the main thing, how we kind of came together and things started working out yeah. how we like it. <laughs> like, I never, I never went through depression when I retired because all I did was play for money. Yeah. Like, all, I, my whole goal was to make my, I've told, I've told the story before, like, and they told me, like, Freddie's going to be a Hall of Famer. RC wanted to be, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what you play for. I didn't give six about going to the Hall of Fame. All I wanted to do was make as much possible money from these people as I can before my body breaks down. Yeah. And that was my thing. So that depression, like, did, did it affect y'all's, like, physical life? You asked sex that life. very nicely. I'm you see very what I'm proud saying? of you. Like, sex life. The sex life, like. Is that a sign? Like, was Ross not Rossing like he was doing <laughs> in college? Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. They jump, you jump out the boat and you you yeah. showing out. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby pose. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and then now y'all sitting happened? in missionary breathing on each other. Shannon just had. <laughs> Uh, uh, this boy is crazy. Because <laughs> you say two years at least, right? Yeah, it was for sure. Might have been years. three. I couldn't watch years. ball for three years yeah. at all. I, I just couldn't do it. I'm going to say this. I feel like my husband, like these two things on my husband aren't connected really. So I don't, I don't really feel like there was a major drop off. I feel like that probably was like the highlight of the date. That was a stress relief. <laughs> that helped me out. Hey, hey, that was the football game. No. Hey, 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 boy, put his shit strap on. He walk into that room. I don't know what to do with life, but. <laughs> Hey, well, you know what? All right, let me go back. <laughs> let me go back to the movie room. <laughs> it's, not, it, it, it's really, um, it, it really, it, it's really amazing uh, for me because when you see, you know, Channing say he loves love, yeah. and certainly black love, and to see two very highly accomplished, you know, black individuals, black couple. You know, there there are times when stress, you know, jealousy or, yeah. you know, you trying to be the star of the household or, or vice versa. These things can come into play, you know, and lead to, you know, you guys being in court or, right. or whatever yeah. it might be. But to see you guys still standing strong on, you know, what you set out to do back in 03, you said? Yeah. 03, okay. I think is a beautiful thing, man. And Ryan usually rap. I appreciate you guys for joining us and pivoting with us, man. Nothing but success and blessings. Sure. Wishing you guys the best. Yeah, and thank you so much because, you know, you, you kind of never know how some things are, are going to work out. Like I said, it's our first time having an opportunity to to be with a couple. Y'all laughed with us. Uh, there was a point I thought we were about to cry. Um, and too, though, the, the things that you share and the reason we do this show is to help other people. And there's going to be somebody that's going through what you went through. There's going to be somebody that's going through what you went through. Somebody that's going through what you guys are going through together. And you are truly an inspiration to say, man, to walk on the campus, bro, and be like number five. And for her to see you and be like, say, say, Brown, come over here. <laughs> and for y'all to still be standing, man, is, is, is a testament to who you both are as people and how you love one another. So, man, thank y'all for pivoting with us. Yay. Y'all are our, our first couple, and, and y'all have set the hey, y'all have set the bar very high, very high. Appreciate y'all. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate y'all, oh my dog. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, that, was, that was great. Thank y'all so much. Y'all were amazing. Thank, thank you so much. Y'all, we appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Hold up. Let me let take a simmer cap pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On this vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Nigga, send me cap pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the